This is weird. I don't. I don't even remember how to do this. Just like a cool breeze, Jack. I feel, I feel a lot more comfortable holding this like this, ironically. Hey everybody, my name is Spencer Stanley, and in today's video, I'm gonna be talking about a few things that I would do if I were to restart my video production company today, like in 2023, we're approaching. Does anybody else like kind of feel like they don't know what the year it is anymore with COVID? Like with, with COVID being done, I'm, I'm gonna go and say that it's pretty much done at this point. I've been drinking these non-alcoholic beers, uh, I'm not really doing sober October. I'm just trying to do less drunk October. So I started drinking these non-alcoholic beers and I really like them. Like I, I, the other day I was doing something in the morning and I didn't want to have drinks. It was like a weekend. And I went out with people that were drinking and I brought these and I was like, these are delicious. I don't have any need for alcohol. So I've been trying to like supplement them every time I want to be, let's try this one first. If I still want a beer, okay, well, we'll have a real beer after that, you know? So uh, anyways, if I were to start my production company in 2023, what would I do? Well, there's a couple things that I would do differently. I've learned a lot over the past two and a half years. I also have been doing this sort of work for like five, six, six years. Like I, I've been doing freelance video for a long time, but it's been two and a half years full time, with like a, a company name, even though it's mostly myself and just kind of like doing it, you know? So I, I've learned a lot over this time and I wanted to kind of make a video going over the things that if I could restart today in 2023, what would I change? What would I do first and how would I go about things? So the first one would be that customer service is everything. It's sometimes hard, especially as a business owner, as a freelancer, to have amazing customer service because you're almost doing everything. And a lot of the times, maybe your clients don't treat you amazingly and you kind of got to snap back. Like you have to be the face of the, you are the face of the company. So having amazing customer service and trying to have an amazing customer journey, amazing customer service throughout the, the, the entire process is super important as an entrepreneur and especially as somebody in video production. Now, the reason that this is so important is because a lot of what we try and do is have repeat customers and we use a lot of word of mouth uh, marketing. It's not really marketing. In, in marketing school, they would tell me it wasn't marketing, but it kind of is. A lot of word of mouth referrals and whatnot is how I get a lot of my business. And I get the most of my business from good word of mouth referrals. So if I treat a customer poorly, they're not going to refer me and they might even, you know, talk negatively to me to another customer looking for similar work. You can do the best work in the world, but if you're not a nice person, if you don't treat your clients nicely, you're not going to get referred work. So start up and just try and be as good as possible to your customers. And one of the biggest things that I try and do is under promise and over deliver. Tell a client that it's gonna take two weeks to deliver a video, even though you know it's only gonna take a week. Because when they get that video a week early or however early it is, they are gonna be so enthused and excited about getting that video, especially if it's somebody that's really excited about the project and whatnot and wants that video soon. Or if it's more of a personal client, like say you do weddings or something along that sort or headshots or something where somebody's really excited to get that, that, that asset, it means the world. And it also saves your butt. Like you're not, you're not doing this in hopes to lie to somebody. You're doing this so that you have time to do everything. So that also in terms of customer service, you are not going to be sending things late. Like if you're, if you're trying to say, okay, I'll get it to you as soon as I possibly can. I'll get it to you in a week. And then you get it to them in two weeks because you're overbooked. You're, you're too busy. Well, that's bad customer service and that looks bad. Um, so just be cognizant of those little things. And I think that, that, that side of customer service will put you a long way. The other thing that really ties into customer service is just being as professional as you can. Now, this can be a lot of different things. Um, I like to relate it very importantly to how I reflect on my business, how my business looks out in the world, and how I present myself while working for my business. So. An example of that would be a really clean, crisp, professional invoice, making sure you um, have a good business communication skills when emailing clients, dressing properly. I, I used to try and over, not overdress, but dress really nicely on shoots. And then I've kind of realized that just dress like minimally and for comfort. You don't have to wear a suit to every, every video shoot unless say you're interviewing somebody that would be wearing a suit because they're an accountant or something like that. Or if you're at a wedding or this and that, you, you have to dress appropriately and you just wanna definitely represent your business in a very nice light. So be as professional as you can. 
communication, the way you, you dress and the way that you look, make sure you get a haircut once in a while and shave your scruffy beard. I, I, sometimes when I'm in editing mode, I just, I don't do that enough. So something to think about. So to go on a different type of tangent, uh, one of the most important things that I think you could do and that you should do immediately as soon as you can afford it is to hire an accountant. I did this fairly early on, but I think the first like half, like six months to a year, my accounting was an absolute mess. I didn't know what I was doing. I didn't know how to do it properly. And I had to go back and fix all of that. So a big tip would be to get a business account. Even if you are going under your own name, like Spencer Stanley Creative, get a business account so you could separate transactions, get a, an, a bank account is, is what I'm referring to, and then get a business credit card as well. And do all of your business transactions through your business bank account and your business credit card. The business bank account should have different savings accounts and a checking account. All of the money should come in and go out of the checking account and you should have different savings accounts to pretty much prioritize the different accounts that you need. So for example, I have a future investments account that I try and put 20% of every little bit of revenue that comes in towards. I have an emergency account, which I try to put 5% of every revenue in towards. And then I have a sales tax and an income tax account. What I do is as soon as I get paid, money comes in, goes into the checking account. We take the money from the checking account and we pay the sales tax because that's not my money, that's the government's money. That money is going into the sales tax uh, savings account. And then I take the 30% or whatever amount it is. I always try and do a little bit more than what I'm calculating it out to be. So let's say I take 30% of the rest of the amount after the sales tax. I put that into my income tax account so that I'm never touching my income tax. It's always sitting there in an account all year. Um, so at the end of the year, I don't have to be like, whoa, I need to come up with 20, 30, $40,000 because that would not be very easy and it would give me anxiety a lot. And then if, if the business is, is doing well, if, if we're making enough money, I put 5% into an emergency fund just to be, you know, you, you never know what kind of emergency expenses you're going to have. And then 20% into future investments. So that's buying new gear like this microphone or camera or memory cards, all that kind of stuff. So I could draw from that account. And then all the money that's going out and in. So either to pay myself, um, my draw, my owner's equity, whatever you call it, uh, I pay myself from that checking account. And then if I, if I hired a PA or a DP or something, I'll pay them from that account as well. And then all my, you know, transactions go to that account. And then I pretty much pay for everything else on my credit card. That's all connected to my accounting software. So it goes into my transactions and then my account can kind of go through that. I, I'm not a good accountant. I took managerial and financial accounting in uh, university when I was taking my business degree, but I suck. So I think out of this whole video, that actually might be one of the more important things that I'm getting at. And I didn't think I was going to go into as much depth, but take that. That one's a good one. So even if you're not in video production, if you're a photographer, if you have any type of business, that's a really important financial uh, thing that it took me a while to learn. And I have friends that still don't do it properly and don't put their income tax away or their sales tax. And they're going to have a very rude awakening when the CRA comes and knocks on their door. So the next one is one that I honestly don't even do all the time, which is terrible to even admit. Um, and that's send a contract. So I basically created a generic contract that I can send to my clients and change depending on the project. The problem is it's, it, it takes a lot of time and I, I get lazy, I get busy and I forget to do it sometimes, uh, which is wrong. You should always send a contract to define deliverables, payment, timeline, all that sort of stuff. Look up the best type of contract for the type of work that you do and try and find provisions within that contract that you could apply so that say if somebody cancels a video production shoot well you have people hired for that day um, they still have to pay a certain amount because they're canceling that shoot and you have to pay these people and that's also time that you have allocated as revenue for your company that you can't hire other you can't be hired for so contracts are extremely important. Um, what I try and do just in case I don't send one, which I do not recommend not sending one, is I try and cover my butt in the terms on my proposals, estimates that I send when getting work. So you could have people sign or just, I'm pretty sure even an email agreement saying we accept this, this uh, proposal or estimate is good enough in terms of law. I'm not a lawyer, so I, you know, don't take that as is, is law. I, I'm not really sure, but you should get a signature on either an estimate or a contract, or some people just put the contract on their proposals estimates and then they sign them. That might even be a better idea. Just, you just got to kind of change it depending on the project. So always have some type of way that if a client comes to you and they're like, 
oh yeah, you didn't do this, you you know, anything, or if they don't want to pay you, you have a con contractual obligation on paper or, you know, cloud document type thing that you could go back to and take them to small claims court or, or whatever ends up happening. I feel like I could go and do a whole video on contracts. I feel like that's a good video. So let me know if, if there's any of these topics where you'd like to have me elaborate because I feel like I could talk about these topics for like 10 minutes each, uh, let me know. The next one is in our line of work, cash flow and deposits are everything. I, the, the way that I run it is on my estimates, my proposals, I say that we take a 50% deposit upfront before any work starts so that we make sure we're getting paid and that the, you know, the project's actually gonna happen before we start any work. This also allows us to pay contractors, craft, travel expenses, so that we're not just going out of pocket and reducing our cash flow to pay for these things. Sometimes that's just how it works. Sometimes people can't get you deposits on time. I'm very lenient if I worked with a company before and they're, I know they're gonna pay me, but when starting, especially with a new client that you've never worked for before, it's it's not like a I don't trust you type of thing. It's just a business practices thing and nobody should take that uh, the wrong way. From there, I used to do net 30. I will almost never do beyond net 30. I know maybe some businesses uh, work that way, but that's just not the way that I outline the way that my business works, but we've changed that from that 30. It would it used to be 50% upfront, 50, uh, the remaining 50% after deliverables are sent um, and approved, but now I've changed it to 50% upfront and then the final amount after approval and before deliverables are sent. This is just so that we don't have any late outstanding invoices and that we don't have any cash flow problems because cash flow is a big problem some of the times and it's just better to have money as soon as you can get it. A lot of businesses might not like that and I usually don't do this if a business full on can't. Like some people are just like, yeah, we won't work for you, with you if, if you're gonna do it this way. And I know they're gonna pay me, I'll be lenient. Typically, I, I, I like to set those terms, especially when working with new clients. And, and the other thing just to kind of close it on is that Gear doesn't matter, but gear does matter. I hate when people say gear isn't as important, you need to focus on this and this. And, and I do agree with some of the, the, the statements that people are making in terms of that, but really no, like gear does matter. I, I feel like my production quality has uh, just ramped up exponentially with the purchase of different types of equipment, specifically like my FX6, uh, this really nice Manfrotto tripod I have. I just got a 300D, I love that thing. But I could, I could make this similar type of image with a $2,000 camera, a nifty 50 lens, and like I'm using a $100 light right now. It's, it's not the 300D on here. So my whole point about this is I think it's really good to invest in things that are gonna save you time, make you more efficient, and make you more money. The problem that I do see a lot of people have is they purchase things that might not necessarily make them more money, might not necessarily make them more efficient, I don't think that some of these purchases are, are really necessary. So I try and hold off and only purchase big, nice thing, not big, not big, nice things, but like, like expensive, uh, valuable pieces of equipment that'll last me a long time and bring me a lot of value to my business. Uh, another little business model thing that I've changed is I used to just have a day rate and combine everything in, but I didn't really like this because if a client needed me to use a drone that maybe I didn't have, or they wanted an outdoor shoot that maybe I couldn't really do because I didn't have the proper scrim or something like that, I would then either have to charge them a rental or go and purchase it because I wanted it anyways, and I wouldn't really make any more money. So now what I do is I have you know a, a half day and a full day labor rate, that's just for me, and then each piece of equipment that's needed to complete the task is an additional uh, rental fee, which is similar to the rental fees that, um, a rental, like a, a camera rental agency in my area would charge. Um, this way that I make, this way I make sure that I'm not just expensing everything and the business is actually making a bit more profit and it's paying off these things instead of, you know, these just being what I bring with me and, I, and really not seeing that money back from them. Um, I hope that makes sense. And I can break that down into a little bit more detail as we go. I think a lot of the problem is you just need to educate the client on why you know you do things the way that you do them and why you know these businesses are run the way they are. This was a really you know ranty video. I, I hope it was informative and I hope you really appreciate it. I'm trying, or I'm going to try to make a lot more videos. Um, work has just been crazy. Like the production company has been doing really good and I have been going nonstop 
And when I'm doing that, it's really hard for me to focus and, and, and put time into this. But I love making these videos and this is what I like to do, but it doesn't fully pay the bills to you know support a house, support a business, support my lifestyle. And uh, until it does that, it's, it's a tough balance. So I'm gonna try and put a lot more effort into this channel. And I really appreciate everybody that's stuck around and subscribed to the channel. Um, like I said, I'm gonna be making more videos. So if you wanna subscribe, this is a great time to do so. And if you found value in this video, please feel free to give it a like. You can't dislike it anymore. Uh, well, it doesn't show them because people are soft. So if you, if you hate this video, please dislike it. I, I would really appreciate that. Anyways, uh, we'll catch you in the next one. Peace. Just like a cool breeze, Jack. Should take it in.